Hi guys and welcome to Escape Wheel Watch Reviews. My name is Steve and today we're going to be reviewing the San Martin SN0138G. I received this watch for free. I don't have to send the watch back, but you guys know the deal by now. It's not going to sway my review one way or another. You're always going to get my honest opinion on this channel. And if by the end of this review you want to pick one of these up, I'm going to be leaving a link down in the video description. That is an affiliate link. You guys don't pay any extra. I just get a little commission when you use that link to purchase the watch. It helps keep the channel running. And so yeah, I really do appreciate it when you guys use those links. The retail price for this watch is 235 US dollars. That's before any taxes, sales, coupons, VAT, anything like that. Uh, they do currently offer a $30 coupon, so make sure to apply that before purchase. And we're also in the midst of a sale, so you can actually get a little bit more off than that. So um, yeah, pretty good deal on this watch at the moment. The watch comes in two different colorways that you can see here. The only difference that I'm seeing is the loom. Uh, the blue variant that we have here is using white BGW9 loom, and the black is that faux patina C3 loom. They should both perform pretty similarly, though. The, the watch case is made of 316L stainless steel. It has a sapphire crystal, a screw-down crown, a screw-down case back, 200 meters of claimed water resistance, Swiss superluminova on the dial and the hands, and the watch is powered by the Seiko NH35 automatic movement. So this watch may look pretty familiar to you. Uh, so Watch Dives and San Martin, they teamed up a while back and they created a limited edition of the SN004, which is pretty much the same look as this uh, and pretty close in size as well. Uh, but that watch was made just for watchdives.com. So this is San Martin's take on that same watch. And you know what? I think it's better and it's also slightly smaller. So with that being said, I say we get into this full review. But before we do, doing a quick wrist check today wearing my Damasco DS30. Absolutely love this watch. I can't seem to take it off. <laughs> I'm really, really happy with this thing. Eventually I'll get to reviewing this one, but there's plenty of reviews out there for it. All right, so getting into the dimensions. So we have a case diameter of 36.8 millimeters, case thickness of 12.8 millimeters. We've got 20 millimeter lug width, lug tip to lug tip of 45.5 millimeters, and sized up for my seven and a half inch wrist with two links removed weighs 139 grams. So I think we've finally gotten our small diver, just 30, almost 36 and a half at the case. The bezel does overhang just a little bit there. The bezel I measured right at 38 millimeters. So um, it is a very nice compact diver, uh, nice weight to it as well. Uh, it doesn't feel overly lightweight or cheap or anything like that. The thickness I think is in check as well. A little bit flat on the case sides, as you can see there. Uh, it doesn't really curve down too much, but very compact, lug to lug. Uh, and then that bracelet does hang straight down. So I think it's going to fit a lot of wrist sizes. So I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on my wrist. And here we are on my seven and a half inch wrist. And as you can see, it wears pretty good. It does feel a little bit small for me, but I think if you have smaller wrists, it's going to be perfectly fine. Very flat case, like I mentioned. But again, it's very comfortable. Uh, I got to say, probably based on the weight and the size of this thing, it's it's just a it's very comfortable. The clasp allows you to get the perfect fitment. And yeah, I mean, it just wears really nice for what it is. Sadly, I don't have any direct sunlight, but hopefully I can get you some other pictures here in the direct sun. But there it is out from underneath the tree. You can see it's got plenty of anti-reflective coating on it. It does a pretty good job of keeping the dial nice and legible. It feels a little bit uh, more noticeable here just because we've got the white clouds, but uh, it does do a pretty good job keeping reflections down and keeping the dial nice and clean. So uh, very happy with that. But I say we go inside, we can throw this on some straps, and we can get back to this review. Here we are on a Vario Vintage Leather and Gray. We also got a little bit of sunshine here. You can see it kind of gets a little bit washed out, but it's really not that bad in person. I'm um, just kind of struggling to focus on the dial, but uh, I do still think that looks pretty good. Not my favorite, but yeah, I think it can be pulled off. Here we are on a Samco rubber strap from AliExpress. These ones are pretty decent straps, and I think that actually does look pretty good. Got that little pop of light blue down there, and the rest I think matches fairly decently. And here we are on a brown suede strap. Link will be down below for this one. I think that one actually looks pretty good on that. What do you guys think? And lastly, here we are on kind of a suede tan color. NATO strap. There's two layers underneath the watch there. You can see it setting up a little bit high now. This is a thicker strap, but I still think it's very comfortable and very wearable. It doesn't look funny. It doesn't really sit funny either, so I had plenty of room for this thicker strap, so no issues 
with the spring bars sitting too close to the case. So yeah, I think that actually does look pretty good. All right, let's go back inside and let's get back to this review. All right, so let's talk about the case finishing on this thing. And the case finishing is fantastic, as you come to expect from San Martin. They really are kind of in their own league when it comes to AliExpress watches. Um, obviously, you're paying for it, but, man, the, the finishing on this watch is excellent. You can see here, you got a vertical brushing on the tops of the lugs there. Really nice polished chamfer on the edges there. Uh, super sharp on those transitions. It just looks fantastic. Going to the case sides here, you got a horizontal brushing, and again, nicely done. Nice sheen to it, nice luster. Uh, very happy with the case finishing on this. It's pretty similar to uh, a lot of the divers that I've reviewed from them. They like to do this brushing on the sides and on the top, um, and then that nice polished chamfer, and it just it looks really, really good. You've got your signed San Martin crown there, 6.4 millimeters. Uh, I think it's a itty bitty crown, but I think it's proportional to the case. Um, plenty of grip on it as well. And yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later on. But yeah, very happy with the case finishing on this thing. Flipping it to the case back here, you can see it is your typical style case back. Sterile, circular brushing, got that coin edge style, which I'm not a huge fan of. I wish they would just give us simple notches, but um, yeah, I, I've come to figure out a way to get this off if I really need to. Uh, circular brushing on the bottom of the case, this bottom edge here seems to be nicely done. It's a lot uh, softer than say the San Martin SN017. Uh, their their sub homage um so yeah i'm overall pretty satisfied with this the the weight of it and the comfort of it um yeah it, it wears really nice on wrist i'm happy with it all right so let's talk about the bezel insert and the bezel on this thing so the bezel insert is a ceramic bezel insert it is a matte ceramic as you can see there pretty nicely done it's kind of this dusty blue so uh, there are certain times like this when it's under really good lighting good strong lighting that it doesn't match the dial very good but uh, hopefully you saw in the outdoor shots and stuff like that that it, it is a pretty good match most of the time um, but yeah under strong lighting you can tell it's a little bit lighter than the dial is but uh, for the most part it looks fine uh, you got nice deep engravings on all these markings here. Those are filled with silver paint. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, looking really close there at that five o'clock. You can kind of see that it is silver. It's not white. You got a loom pip that's integrated in there, which is looking really, really good. Uh, overall, I'm very satisfied with it. It's a very minimal bezel. You don't have any uh, minute markings around the outside or anything like that. So uh, yeah, I think it looks really, really nice getting to the bezel itself. Stainless steel, fully brushed really sharp finishing on this and when i say sharp I, I almost mean that to a fault like if you are rubbing your finger gently along this it doesn't feel great uh, it kind of catches and stuff like that but uh, for the most part when you're just using it it gives you plenty of grip um, i don't really think it, it's not it's not a i wouldn't call it a fault but they could definitely kind of soften that up maybe a little bit um, but yeah it does look really good it does feel really good the bezel itself there's no play in it at all it's a 120 click unidirectional bezel i'm going to let you listen to it here so it's kind of that high pitch clicking uh, it feels really good you can feel each and every one of those little clicks uh, really tactile a good resistance and the alignment on it is yeah the alignment on it is spot on um, it's a really good bezel and like I said, there's just there's no back play or anything like that with it So I am very satisfied with the bezel on this thing All right, so let's talk about the crystal on this thing test it for sapphire first you can see it is positive for sapphire So it is a very nice sapphire crystal box dome as you can see there double dome So nice and clear even at the extreme angles. Yeah, nice distortion on the edges It sits up above the bezel just a little tiny bit. You can see actually that bezel is sloped um, so that's another difference between this and the SN004. Uh, but yeah, really, really happy with that crystal. It's got some blue anti-reflective coating, which looks pretty good on this one. It, it doesn't seem to be too much blue AR, especially on this blue model. Maybe it would be different on the black one, but uh, I think I've seen these crystals before from San Martin. It's really not that bad in the middle. It's just on the edges where you get that blue ring. Um, so yeah, that, that's my take on it. I think the blue one's going to look better than the black one, obviously. But uh, yeah, I don't think it should be too distracting even on the black model. Right, so let's talk about the dial on this thing. So the dial is a beautiful, beautiful shade of blue. I absolutely love this blue color. Uh, it's not too bright. It's not too dark. It's not a sunburst. It's just a matte blue. It looks fantastic. It looks really, really good. There's no real texture to it either. Um, it's just a very simple dial, but just a really nice color. I absolutely love it. You got your applied San Martin hex, which 
I'm not a huge fan of. I wish they would have just printed that on the dial. I think it would look better. Uh, the reasoning for that is right now it looks great. It looks really, really good. Get it in lighting like that, it just looks like a big block on the uh, the dial there. So there's times where it looks good. There's times where it looks bad. I think a printed one looks good all the time. So that's my take on it. Hopefully San Martin listens to us and um, you know starts not applying that on everything. But the dial itself is very nicely done. You can see the minute track printed around the outside. I'm hoping it shows. That is silver. The printing down there at the 6 o'clock is also silver. It's not a white printing. Uh, so it does look really, really good. Matches with the uh, applied indices very nicely. Those are all, in my opinion, a really nice size. Uh, and again, done to a very nice high standard from San Martin. No fluff under the dial or anything like that. It just looks fantastic. The handset that they used, it's a good size. Uh, simple, polished handset. No facet or anything like that. But just nice and clean and simple snowflake hands. Really nice second hand there sweeping around the outside. Reaches right out to the minute track. I'm just a big fan of this, the proportions of this. They, they kind of just nailed that. And everything is applied nice and straight too, so no issues there. Very happy with it. The loom color during the day is a pure white. There's no real mismatch at all. Uh, and then at nighttime, it is a blue glow. So I'm going to pop up a loom shot here. You can see it against a couple other watches in the collection. It is listed as BGW X1, so it's the X1 grade of Superluminova. It's the ice blue color. Really nice application on this thing. You can tell here, even against the other San Martin on the left, it just kind of blows it away. It's a very strong application of loom. I am super happy with it. I could read it, no problem. Uh, yeah, even the loom pip holds on tight. So, um, yeah, really happy with the loom on this watch. Okay, so let's talk about the crown and the movement. So the movement is the NH35 from Seiko. Here's how mine has been running. Absolutely fantastic. It's 21,600 beats per hour. It hacks, hand winds, it does everything you need it to do. It's kind of that that tool movement. It, it's, it's robust, it's reliable, it's accurate as you saw there. Um, I'm super happy with these movements. I have zero complaints with them. Um, you know, usually they're running about 10 seconds, within 10 seconds, which I think is acceptable at these prices. Uh, this one is running exceptionally well, though. Uh, the movement is operated by this 3 o'clock screw-down crown, 6.4 in, six in, 6 millimeter crown here. Uh, getting good grip on the crown. I do kind of hit the bezel every once in a while because the bezel does overhang the case, like I mentioned. Um, but really, it's, it doesn't get in the way too bad. Um, really nice smooth screw in and screw out action. Get a nice pop out from the NH35. First position is your hand winding. Feels just like you would expect from an NH35. Uh, nice and solid feeling. Second position, there is a ghost date wheel back there. So you can hear that clicking around. It's not a big deal to me. I know some people would prefer an NH38. I would prefer an NH38, but uh, I really, I have no issue with a ghost date position. Um, Pulling it out to the third position, hacks the movement as you would expect, and then you set your time. Everything functions as it should. The alignment on this thing was spot on. Uh, really happy with that. The crown feels nice and solid too, as you can see there. Uh, really nice positive clicks into place. Very happy with the movement. Very happy with the crown action. Everything feels really good. The only thing I would complain about just a little bit is my, my thumb kind of hitting this bezel here. And because that bezel is a little, little tiny sharp, uh, it does kind of just catch on your thumb a little bit. So uh, other than that, not a big deal. Uh, the movement in this one is running great. All right, so let's talk about the bracelet on this thing. Kind of standard affair when we're talking about San Martin here. 20 millimeters down to 16 millimeters at the clasp. Solid three-link bracelet, as you can see there. Polishing on the sides, brushing on the top. Really nice screw pins for adjusting. I removed two for my 7.5 inch wrist. Uh, nice solid end links here. Nice and solid in there, too. Um, female end links, and they pivot straight down. They follow the case curvature just perfectly. They The brushing is matched perfectly. Uh, really, really nice and tight. Uh, the tolerances on the bracelet are excellent for a three-link bracelet. This is just what you want. Um, yeah, very happy with that. Working our way to the clasp. This is San Martin's new on-the-fly adjustable clasp here. So you got brushing on the sides, brushing on the top, and applied at San Martin Hex logo there. Nice polished chamfer here. Uh, really softly and rounded buttons over here. They have a very good action on them, really nice and springy. Uh, you can see here I still have some tape in here, which I need to take off, but uh, really nice tight tolerances on the bracelet, as you can see. Uh, I'm very satisfied with this. Everything functions as it should. And then you got your on-the-fly adjustment here. Always tough to show on camera, but uh, you got this button here. So 
Right now you can push it in without clicking that button, but you can't pull it out. So that's usually what I do. I put it on wrist and then I'll tighten it down on wrist. No issues with that, but it gives you about seven to eight millimeters of adjustment. And uh, yeah, it is a very satisfying clicking, very satisfying bracelet. Everything is nice and smooth on this one. Uh, yeah, really no issues at all. The clasp in general, it is a little big for my liking, uh, but it does help balance this watch out. This one isn't super lightweight, so uh, I think this bigger, chunkier clasp does work on this one. Um, but yeah, nicely rounded off and everything. There's no real sharp edges. Even, I think they've they kind of worked on this bracelet a little bit. These bottom edges, they aren't as sharp as they used to be. It could still be a little bit more rounded off, but, but in my opinion, it is a very comfortable watch to wear. I wore this thing around for two days, um, kind of throwing it around and... Um, you know, playing games with the kids, and uh, I had no issues with comfort on it. So, um, yeah, I think you guys are going to like the bracelet. It's kind of that standard three-link bracelet from San Martin, and that's not a bad thing at all. It's it's a very nice bracelet, but you, if you've had this before, you kind of know what to expect. So there you go, guys. San Martin SN0138G. This is their brand new model. They list it as a BB54. Uh, it is pretty dang close to the diameter, 36 and a half, 36.8, I think it was. Uh, 38 at the bezel, so it does wear a little bit bigger than a 36, but um, I think it looks really good. I think the materials are there. I, I like that they went with a matte bezel. Uh, nice crystal, killer loom, good bracelet, solid movement. $200 on the sale or less, 200, probably less than $200 on the sale. Um, yeah, really hard to beat this watch, guys. Um, they're pretty incredible watches for the $200. This thing will just blow away anything from Seiko at the $200 price range. Um, so, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.